this hammer was clearly picked up and moved. Marshall Iwasa's brother-in-law, Dawson Fogan, points out areas of particular interest in two photographs. These are pictures taken by the hikers who first found Marshall's burnt-out truck in the backcountry near Pemberton, B.C. on November 23rd. But according to Fogan, there are differences in the photos the hikers took when compared to the photos RCMP took just two days later. We have a bunch of items that used to be in the box that are now spread out, broken, and it looks like water or ice poured on it. Things are strategically placed or broken. Some of it's just completely removed. The family just decided to make these photos public this week. So we figured by putting it out there, we could have more eyes on it. People could see it, maybe it jog someone's memory. Maybe they had heard someone talking about something. This, again, is a very remote area. It was very difficult for us to get there. Um, so it's difficult to think that in that small window of two days when our hikers that took the photos were leaving, um, that someone knew who wasn't involved with Marshall's disappearance happened to go up there and move these items. And our hikers that took the photos, um, they've never mentioned seeing anyone there. We've never seen any logs of anyone being out there. Equally frustrating for Marshall's sister Paige is that pieces of his truck were missing, like the truck's steering column. You don't take off your steering column if you're going to go and commit suicide. You don't take off your steering column if you're going to go for a hike up there. The Iwasa case is being looked at as a missing persons case by authorities, but the family wants the police to bring in a homicide team to look at other possibilities. We've kind of been told that one of the theories that they're working with is either that he, my brother had gone, driven his truck up there, um, and had either got lost or had succumbed to the elements or had um, went up there to commit suicide. And um, you don't do those things with your steering column. And that is extremely frustrating to know that that's been a piece that's been missing since the beginning and was not, they were aware of it. Lethbridge Police Service was unwilling to go on camera but did provide a written statement. They said, quote, from the onset, Iwasa's disappearance has been considered suspicious. However, there is no credible, corroborated, or compelling evidence to suggest foul play or that the matter is criminal in nature. The family has hired a private investigator to help them with the case. They've also gone so far as to begin the drafting phases of a petition, which they're hoping to put online later this week. And we say that it's we think it's criminal, but even if it's not, um, they should investigate it as such so that we can rule that out. For Bridge City News, I'm Jeanette Roche.